All right, so in the last class, we were discussing about fixed gain observers and we were looking at the idea of observability. We defined the observability for discrete time systems, specifically for the case of linear time invariant systems, where these matrices A, B, and C, and D, all four of these are time invariant, which means they do not change with time. In which case we saw that this observability matrix can be constructed as shown here. And as long as it is shown that this observability matrix has a full column rank, then we know that the system is observable. And then therefore fixed gain observers can be built for that system. Whereas in the case of a linear time varying systems, things become a little more complex because the time dependence comes into the picture. And we saw that in this particular case, the observability is given by the fact that this W matrix between some time T1, T0 to T1, if we construct this W matrix, that matrix should be non-singular. And we saw that this W matrix is actually given by this integral zero to infinity, uh, wait a minute, is this zero to infinity? That. should depend on T0 and T1. Hmm. Yeah, this should be, there is a mistake here, this should be T0 to T1. So basically you're integrating from T0 to T1. Okay, that is what it should be. T0 to T1. Okay, so then we saw that this is basically an integration from T0 to uh, infinity phi of T1 tau uh, transpose times C of tau transpose times C of tau times T of T comma tau, T1 comma tau, where this T is the so-called state transition matrix. And C is what is already known to us. C is nothing but the uh, map which maps the output to the from the state vector. So we know what is C is. We have to figure out what is this value of phi. And we found that this value of phi, I told you that it is coming from the fact that if I figure out, if I give a unit value in each of the states, how does it proceed forward in time? and then use that matrix times its inverse in order to try to get the value of the state transition matrix from one time to another time. And I also told you that for most of our applications, we will be interested primarily in the linear time invariant system. And we are only covering the linear time varying system for the sake of completeness, because when we discuss about Kalman filters, we would like to do the same as well. Okay, so the idea is again the same. We discussed about the observability being specified in terms of when this matrix is non-singular, then this linear time varying system is actually observable. Then we started discussing about the Leuenberger observer, where we were looking at the idea that this observer is derived from a deterministic models. So, which means that it's neglecting the process and noise, uh, process and measurement noises, but it will still work even when these are present if the gains are tuned appropriately. So, in order to derive that, we were looking at the idea that let the original system be governed by these equations which you see here. Okay, x dot is equal to ax plus du, y is equal to cx plus du. So, uh, this is the governing differential equation. So this top one is the differential equation. And this is the output of the plant. This is the things which we can actually measure. So which means that Y is what we can actually measure from the system. We do not know what is the internal actual state X. 
our task is to try to predict x as well as we can so we don't know x precisely but still we want to estimate x as best as we can so we set up an observer in order to mimic its dynamics so the idea is that x hat is denoting the estimated state value and its observer's dynamics is defined in a similar manner to what we would see with the original plant but you'll see that there is a second term which is getting added plus k times y minus y hat so where y is the actual measurement and y hat is the measurement that you would have expected if x hat was the actual internal state okay is everybody with me on that y hat represents the internals the output of the plant if x hat was the internal state now if x hat is equal to x then y hat will be equal to y and you should see this term being becoming zero okay in which case you are getting back the same dynamics as before the state estimator's dynamics is now matching with the original plant's dynamics okay so the idea here is that we need to tune the so called observer gain matrix k and in order to tune it we will see that if we take a difference between these equations of the original plant and the equations of the observer plant we will be able to get this dynamics for this estimation error it's tilde which is defined as the difference between x and the x hat so if we do the subtraction we saw that the error dynamics is actually given by x hat dot x tilde dot is equal to matrix a minus k times c times x tilde so as long as we can show that the eigen values the eigen values of this matrix are having negative real parts all of the eigen values are having negative real parts we can be rest assured that for any given perturbation the system will exponentially decay down to zero so our task is basically to choose k such that a minus kc eigen values become negative is that making sense okay that is our main aspect of the so when we are doing the design of the observer we want to make sure k is such that the system's poles or basically all the eigen values will lie in the left half plane or have negative real parts now as long as the system is observable a constant value k can be found for any given pair of a and c so as long as the system is observable so the observability property is really useful here that without the observability i can't guarantee that a k will exist but when the system is observable it definitely one k will exist which will be uh, satisfying this uh, error dynamics all right now let us see how we apply this leuenberger observer for heading autopilots notice that when we want to apply this observer again our task is to figure out how to separate out the low frequency components and the wave frequency components so that we can use the low frequency components in our feedback of our control system that is the main goal now for this particular example we will assume that the heading angle is measured using a gyro compass okay and that is the only measurement which we are getting so we'll assume that only the heading angle is being measured and i'm primarily interested in the yaw dynamics for say then i'm assuming that only psi is measured but r is not measured but in a real vessel you will see that it is actually r which is measured and psi is also measured using a gyro compass okay for for our applications purpose perspective just to demonstrate that uh, some of the states are not being measured and still can be handled i'll only consider that one of the state which is psi which is being measured in this particular example now assuming that our yaw dynamics is given by nomotos first order model you can see that psi dot is equal to r and r dot is equal to minus 1 by t times r plus k by t times delta that is what would be our first order nomotos model but now you see that there is an additional term i have delta minus b okay 
and where B is describing the so-called bias. So this is in some way I am assuming that the environmental disturbances, the low frequency environmental disturbances with respect to ocean currents, wind gusts or second order wave drift forces can be somewhat approximated by a random walk process which means that I am basically integrating white noise over in order to get this value of B. That is what you see in the third equation. The derivative of B is the white noise W2. Is everybody following me so far? Okay, I am making an approximate model here to deal with it. I am not really interested in getting the yaw dynamics precisely right as we have discussed before. Yes, no, maybe. Seeing some blank faces, that's why. Clear? Okay, all right. Sir, can you yes. repeat that white noise part? I didn't actually get it. Sorry? Uh, can you repeat the white noise part? How it, how it is implemented here? What part is independent? The no, the white noise part that is W1 and W2, right? Correct, correct. So, W1 and W2 are white noises that I'm adding. Okay, fine. What I'm saying is my ocean wave disturbances, ocean current disturbances, or wave wind disturbances, or let us say second order drift forces from waves, they can all be modeled as an integral of white noise. That is why you see B dot is equal to W. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so B is nothing but integral of the white noise. Okay, so let us assume that this is our dynamics for the low frequency motion of the ship, where the rudder offset B is modeled as a Gaussian random walk. So whenever I am looking at the integral of the white noise, that process is called as a random walk. Its name is random walk. And we are not going too much into the details of what is white noise, what is stochastic nature. All of that is beyond the scope of our course. But this is a fairly simple aspect which we can appreciate and go ahead with. Okay. Now, and that bias term is needed to counteract these so-called slowly varying moments on a ship due to wave drift, low frequency wind, ocean currents. Notice that whenever delta is equal to this bias term, we, it gives me that R is 0 and psi is constant in the steady state condition. Okay. Whenever the delta is equal to the bias term, so whatever that external disturbances are coming in, whatever moments they are generating in, if my rudder is able to compensate equal to that bias term, then basically everything comes back to what was there before, which is that in the steady state condition, R is 0 and the ship has a straight line stability. That's what this means. All right. Now, the wave response in the, what you call for the psi of the yaw angle can be modeled as a second order dynamics as we had seen before, right? The whole idea here is to try to see that whether we are able to, whether our observer will be able to reject this or not, right? That is the main objective. That is why we are trying to see this. Rather than go for an extensive realistic modeling, we can go with this approximate modeling and be able to separate out the components. That is what is of interest to us. I am not really bothered about whether the wave frequency yaw that I have got is how accurate or not, but whether I have been able to eliminate all the wave frequency components to one side or not. That is my objective here. So I can get away with this idea that I will represent the your dynamics as a second order system and you can see that basically this amounts to the idea. So if I differentiate the first equation and substitute the second one into it, you'll see that psi w double dot plus 2 lambda omega naught times psi w dot plus omega naught square times psi w is equal to kw times w3 dot. That is what will come. Right? 
it is as if I'm having a second order system with respect to psi, a spring mass damper system, which is being excited by some white noise derivative and the output is coming out to be my psi. Okay. All right. Where again, you will observe that we had two white noises here, W1 and W2 in the low frequency model. And now we have another one in the wave frequency model, which is W3. So W1, W2 and W3 are assumed to be zero mean Gaussian white noise processes. Okay. So they are Gaussian processes, but they have a zero mean, which means they are oscillating above zero. Now, the compass measurement can be expressed now as the sum of psi and psi w. I have to add the wave component as well as the low frequency motion together, but then there will be other additional noise which is coming due to the sensor itself, the sensor's measurement noise, and that I am representing as epsilon, which is also assumed to be a zero mean Gaussian process. So you'll see the common theme in all of this systems that I'm dealing with the Gaussian noise processes. I'm not dealing with any other noises. The reason is because we are looking at linear systems, a Gaussian noise will make sure that the output of the system is also linear. When the system is not having a Gaussian noise, but some other noise, then you may be in a little bit of a, uh, you may not be able to precisely get the carbon filter working exactly. It will not give you the best estimate. But you'll see for most practical purposes, this is a very good approximation. We can consider the white noise as a good approximation for most of the systems that we are going to be looking at. Unless until there is some really obscure system which has a really weird noise, this model more or less addresses most of our practical considerations. Okay, note that in this particular example, we are only measuring, only measuring y which means r psi w psi uh, zeta w are not measured these are not explicitly measured anywhere okay so if i put down my states okay my state vector will now look like this it has five states which include zeta w oh, sorry i w psi w psi r and the bias term b All right now my noise vector is basically a three cross one vector which is consisting of three gaussian white noises zero mean gaussian white noises w1 w2 and w3 i can now represent my entire system in the state space form which is what we want so that we can develop our observers for this where you will now see that I am expressing x dot as a times x plus b times u plus e times w and the output y, I have not put brackets here because in this case we know that it's a scalar value, right? We know that y is going to be a scalar value that is given by c times x plus the noise, measurement noise which is coming as epsilon. So let's take a look at what is going on in these matrices so that we can appreciate whether the equations of motion which we had are actually being captured here or not. So the A matrix is simply given by this matrix. So where you see this top corner is representing the states which are relating to the wave frequency stuff. Okay, and the bottom half, the bottom right corner is representing the stuff relating to the low frequency stuff. So remember again, our states are zeta w and psi w on the first two. So which means from the first two rows, you will see that this matrix is being multiplied by zeta w, psi w, and then psi r and b. And that should give me as an output on the left hand side, zeta w dot, psi w dot, psi dot, r dot, and b dot. These are what I should get by. Concentrating on the first two rows, you will see that psi w dot is given by, when I do the multiplication, it will come out to be equal to psi w. Correct? Chi w dot 
will come out to be psi w. What will psi w dot come out to be? Second row multiplying by the column. What do we get? Yes, Minus omega zero square zeta after zero. Yes, Minus zeta. omega zero square times chi w. Psi w and minus. And minus two lambda omega naught times psi w. Okay. We are missing the noise term, but that noise term will be captured here in the E matrix. So we need not worry about it in the A matrix. Okay. All right. In a similar manner, you will see that psi dot is equal to R from the third line, and R dot is actually given by the Nomoto model minus psi by minus R by T and minus K by T times B. You will see that the rudder is not taken into account. The rudder is coming in the next one where we are talking about this B matrix. The rudder will figure here. Everybody with me so far? All right. So when I look at the B matrix, I'll see that it is 0, 0, 0, K by T times and 0, a column vector which is consisting of this, which means the rudder's effect is only coming in the R dot equation which is what we saw before also, right? It is only in the R dot equation that rudder angle appears. That is the only place where the control input appears. Okay, then we have the E, e matrix, which is the last, oh, there is something else which I missed, the C matrix. The C is the output. So when this is multiplied by the state vector, I want the sum of this and this, that is my output. I am not measuring individually each of them. I am measuring the combined output only. Right? So that is why my C matrix here will be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Is this making sense? Can okay, you repeat this, sir? Basically, my output is the combined effect of wave induced yaw and the low frequency yaw combined. That is what I am measuring, right? Yeah. So that is why my C matrix okay, has yeah. to be equal this, to psi w plus psi. Yeah, it is psi plus psi w plus. Yeah. So therefore, that is why my C matrix will be zero one one zero zero. Everybody with me on that? Okay. All right. Now our E matrix is basically K w times W three, right? I just reverse the order of W in this looks like. Hmm. This KW should have been. So this matrix when multiplied by W3, W1, and W2 will give me the right answer. Okay, so what I meant to do was here the order was not correct. So W3 will be the first hello followed by W1 and W2. So that when I do the multiplication, I'll see that in the wave frequency case, I'll get KW times W3, which is what we had here, right? KW times W3, right? And in the low frequency case, I had W2 in the R dot equation, W1 in the R dot equation and W2 in the B dot equation, which means this row when multiplied this row when multiplied by this column will give me W1 which gets added to the R dot equation and the B dot equation will be adding W2 to so that gives me the complete state space set of equations. For whatever equations I had, now I am able to express them in the matrix format in this manner, what you see here. Is that clear? So the same set of equations, we have put it in a matrix form now. Okay, once we have put it in a matrix form, now we are in a position to evaluate the so-called Uenberger, we, we have all the matrices information. We know what is A, B, and C. So therefore, we can 
our task is simply to find a matrix k such that the matrix a minus k times c has eigenvalues which are having negative real parts so as long as i can find a k value such that this is happening i can tune my controller accordingly in fact you may even do a pole placement method here as well in the sense that suppose i know what, where are the poles i want to fake i want to put okay so for example this is a 5 cross 1 system right so the characteristic equation will have a five poles everybody with me so far there will be five poles which i need to fix and once i decide where to put those five poles i can formulate the characteristic equation let us say i want to put one pole at minus 1 another one at minus 2 another one at minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 so i simply take s minus 1 s plus 1 sorry times s plus 2 s plus 3 s plus 4 and s plus 5 that becomes my characteristic polynomial in s right and i simply need to find the s minus this fellow s times identity matrix minus this quantity this determinant will give me another polynomial in s i basically compare the coefficients between them and figure out what should be the matrix values in k matrix so that those coefficients match out to wherever i want the poles to Okay. so that is the simplest pole placement method which we can apply same process as what we have seen before no different but we can apply that to put the poles of the system wherever i want them so that they are all in the left half plane we know that all the eigen values are then negative real parts and therefore it will decay down to zero we're confident about that okay all right so the main task is basically to try to put it or express it in the state space form so that you know how a b c and d and in fact one thing which i forgot to do here was that you have to verify that whether the pair a comma c is actually observable or not right it it is actually very clear to see you can try to do this yourself if you it will it will come out to be a 5 by 5 matrix and you can put it in matlab and give some values to k and t and test it out for yourself as long as t is greater than 0 you will see that the matrix is observable the the matlab has commands for testing observability matrix okay so if you give the matrix a and c to it it can automatically tell you what the observability matrix is and whether it has a full rank or not both things can be found out in matlab okay previously one would have had to go through a lot of linear algebra to solve it by hand but now in the age of computers we don't have to do that we can use software tools like matlab to figure that out whether the system is observable or not you can see you can verify this on yourself that the system is observable maybe if we have a little bit of a time next class i will just put in some values on a matlab script and show this in class so as to convince us this okay all right so that kind of completes our idea of a leuenberger uh, based observer which we are formulating some salient points of this observer i would like to highlight so when we are saying that i have a measurement which i am measuring and then i am modeling psi and psi w using these methods which you are seeing here psi w is modeled using this and psi is modeled using the nomotos first order model then intrinsically what is happening is that when you are predicting as to what should be the internal states of the system you are actually predicting all these five quantities right now your real graph may be doing some funny businesses but you are taking whatever it is doing and you are characterizing how much of it is due to wave component how much of it is due to low frequency component you are separating it out and formulating your internal states so your internal state now has the ability to separate out the low frequency components and the high frequency components 
note that when you are doing this what are you tuning you have to tune tune your omega 0 correctly where is that omega 0 in the wave frequency part this omega 0 is the frequency around which i will consider the effects to be actually components of wave frequency effects so any frequencies which are neighboring omega 0 my filter will automatically characterize them as wave frequency effects and will put them inside of you and whatever is in the low frequency far away from this it will bring and put them inside is that making sense is this part clear can we move forward or shall we if there are any questions on this Uenberger observer Can you explain this last part? Ah, sure. So what is happening is then you are measuring only Y, right? Which is the combined compass measurements, which is what is actually coming from your system. Yes. So if I have a compass on board a vessel, then I am measuring that compass value is what I am measuring as Y. Yes. Now internally, I am thinking that the dynamics of the plant is given by whatever I have specified here. I assume that the waves are governed by these equations and the low frequency motion is governed by these equations. But you and I know that these are not exact. Yes. Correct? Because we assume that the waves are coming out of white noise. We did not really go through RAOs and do all of that to figure out what is happening. Yes. But what I am saying is, by choosing a model in this manner, what you are doing is, whatever is in and around omega zero frequency, your model is going to characterize that as wave frequency effects. Yes. Okay. So whatever components in and around the wave frequency effects are there, they will be extracted and they will be put into psi w. Mm -hmm. Yes. And whatever is left will be put into psi. Mm. Mm. Notice that we do not know, we only know why. So we do not know how much should go into this and how much should go into this. Mm. And how much should be the noise. We actually don't know all three of them. Mm. But the filter is able to now take your signal and once you have tuned your K matrix in such a manner that all the poles lie to the left half plane in, such that the errors are going to zero, it's guaranteeing you that all your components in the low frequency and the wave frequency effects can be isolated away. Mm -hmm. That's a good enough approximation. Notice that this is not exact dynamics. Yes. Because the model which we chose for the plant is only an approximate thing, especially for the wave dynamics and especially for the low frequency stuff as well. We didn't choose any cross coupling terms and all that, all those effects have not been taken into account here. But still, the model can easily separate out based on this modeling. It will separate out whatever is coming in omega zero, in and around the omega zero, it will separate them out into wave frequency components and whatever is far away from those will be separated out into low frequency. and whatever is the high frequency stuff will be put in the noise. So that is naturally happening for you automatically. So this is an alternative method to filter out your signal and figure out what is the low frequency components and what is the high frequency components without actually using a low pass filter or a notch filter. Okay. Now, the next design will be Kalman filter. You will see that it's a bare extension of this, actually, in a way. Let's take a look at it so that it will it'll start to make sense in just a bit. All right. Is this part clear uh, or should we dwell a little more on this? Tell me if something is unclear. We'll talk a little bit more. Sir, how is it filtering? The more, like you say, it is automatically doing it for us. Like, where is that? Thing? Where is it? Where is it filtering between the, the, the wave frequency and the low frequency? 
Ah, so basically you are giving it the output y only, right? Yes. But then your state. estimator, your state estimator is trying to figure out the complete state vector, correct? Because I now know A, B, C and D matrices. I am formulating the state estimator, correct? Mm, yes. But the output is the only thing which I know. I'm only knowing the measurements. I do not know anything else about the plant. But I am saying my states consist of a low frequency motion and a high frequency motion. And the combination of those two is what the output is giving me. I am presuming that. Yes. Right. And in the dynamics, I am presuming that the wave frequency components are coming in and around omega zero. That is why I am modeling it as a second order system with its natural period being close to natural frequency being close to omega zero. That is how I have chosen the dynamics, right? Yes. By choosing the dynamics in that manner, I am basically telling the filter that when you do the filtering, whatever can be accounted for, which is coming in the omega zero range of frequencies, they probably are coming from your wave frequency effects. They are, please account them in side of you. No, still not making sense. Tell me where the confusion is. How is it separating? That's a, that's what I didn't understand. Like the, uh, you you specified omega zero the wave frequency, uh, like the wave will have a frequency around omega zero. Now the problem is the filter has to estimate the internal states. Yeah, this x hat. If it has that x hat, it has to internal states. It has to figure out in that internal states we have psi and psi w both. Yes. So it has to now make a distinction on what should be placed in psi and what should be placed in psi w such that the sum is equal to 1. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Right? That is what it is task is. Yes. Right? And the idea is the low frequency stuff should be governed by the Nomothos model, should be relatively governed by the Nomothos model, and the high frequency stuff should be governed by the wave dynamics that I have prescribed. Yes. How best to separate the signals out such that they can be explained well. That is what it's trying to do. I gave it Y, but it now has to decide how much of it should I place it in Psi W and how much of it should I place in Psi so that the sum of them is equal, equal to Y. Correct? Yeah. Yes. But I told it also that psi w's dynamics is in and around omega zero. So whatever is coming in and around omega zero, it will automatically try to place it in psi w. And whatever is not in and around omega zero, it will try to place it in psi. Okay. Like uh, I was uh, like confused about how it, it is being done automatically. That. It is being done because we have the dynamics which we have prescribed. We have defined the dynamics. We have defined the dynamics in that manner to make that distinction happen. If I now suddenly change my omega zero frequency to be in very low frequency regime, your filter will not converge probably very easily. Oh, yes. It will confuse between the left and the wave frequency. Where should I put it? It will not be clear. Should I put it inside or should I put it inside of you? And there may be multiple possible answers. It will try to find the optimal best and put it. Okay. Mathematics will try to fix it up in the most optimal manner possible. But if the optimization problem is ill specified, then it will also have trouble. Yes. But as long as the distinction is clear, where the dynamics of the wave frequency is sufficiently separated from the dynamics of the low frequency, it will try to do a good job. Even when they are not separated out for smaller ships where we discuss that the wave frequency may be overlapping with the control bandwidth, even in that case, it will try to do the best possible job and give back to you. Okay, so here we are kind of using the idea of optimization methods underlyingly by specifying the dynamics and saying that find me the best fit 
of psi and psi w which will give me the fact that psi plus psi w is y yes okay rather than telling it that oh no i am specifying these frequency ranges diminish them these frequency ranges account for them in the low frequency part that is what i did when i was prescribing low low pass filters i gave the cutoff frequency i said that from this frequency onwards you only consider that here i am not explicitly doing that but rather i am kind of telling the system that assuming that most of my wave frequencies are concentrated along omega 0 think of it as if i am telling it uh, that the dynamics of the waves should be governed by omega 0 but i am not spe clearly specifying omega 0 is the cut off frequency i am letting it handle things on its on my behalf Right? It's yes. trying to do the best possible fit of psi and psi w such that the addition turns out to be whatever my output is. Okay, and this process will be basically be more. Uh, so right now, as I said, the Leuenberger observer is based purely on where the poles of the system are. I'm just trying to put k values such that the system's eigen values are real and negative. i am not considering actually what is happening to the noise in the system the noise has not been taken into account in our analysis anywhere right no you are not observing that there is no noise here when i took the difference between this system and the next system there is no noise here right but in our real dynamics there was a noise term also isn't it when we de developed our nomothos model there was a noise correct yes but that noise seems to be absent in the uh, dynamics which is prescribed here and based on this dynamics i specified that the errors dynamics will be governed by this equation without the noise assuming that the noise is zero right so i didn't explicitly consider noise in the design of the filter or design of k when i was trying to figure out what is the values of k i'm not paying attention to what is the covariance of the noises but when it comes to kalman filter what we will do is we'll now pay attention to the noises as well we'll now take into account with the noises being in the system how should i separate confusion tell me where is the confusion don't feel shy even if you're not able to articulate properly that's fine at least attempt where might be the problem what is not clear sir in this case then the noise like uh, in in the estimated one and the actual one the we assume that we are taking the same noise and then they got uh, So uh, ready uh, proceed further in the noise. Uh, yeah, in X hat also uh, noise to be the same thing as in the, as in the X. No, no, there is no noise actually in the X. There is no noise term here. When I define the value of k, the error dynamics is given by this only when there is no noise. If there is noise, then there will be extra terms here. So, like the one that we formulated later, the. Hmm. So there, we said that uh, it is still working with the with the noise noiseless way it be formulated. It. No, no, later. Ha, huh. come again. Sorry. Uh, yeah, this system has noise. That's what you mean. Yeah. Ha, huh. it is having noise, but when I tune the value of k, notice that I am not considering noise into effect. how big is the covariance of these noises is nowhere coming into the picture of me determining k that I is because we used the one without the noise for this uh, analysis right for getting the k correct so whenever i am deciding what value of k should be even when the noise is present my tuning of k is independent of the noise it only is depending on a and c 
Yeah. I only want to make sure the A minus K times C matrix should have negative eigenvalues. Hmm. That's all. I'm not paying attention to how big the noise is. But in reality, the noise may have an effect, will have an effect actually. Here we ended up with using the A minus KC because we were using the noise, the one without noise, we used that and we found this A minus KC should have negative uh, eigenvalues. Correct. But we, uh, here we actually have the noise. So even if we go further with the, using this thing, uh, uh, we will again use say X hat is equal to X hat dot is equal to A X hat plus B U uh, plus something that then again uh, like if we uh, so our noise the our prediction about the noise will determine whether we have it included or not no 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 it's not about prediction of our noise i am not considering noise in tuning of k that's all i'm saying the noise is there and so therefore my dynamics will not be as exact as what i designed it to be See, I am designing the value of K hmm. only on the basis of A and C, yes. even though there is noise in the system. Yes. That's what I'm doing here, right? This system has noise. I am basically disregarding the noise and I'm simply taking A minus KC, finding its eigenvalues and putting them at certain locations. That's all. Yes. Now, if the noise is really large, what will happen is an unknown because my dynamics of the filter was based on deterministic dynamics. Hmm. I never took into account based on the noise also can my gain change. Hmm. My gain value of K does not depend on the covariance matrices of the noise in this case. Hmm. Right. But then uh, like when indirectly, uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, got it, got it. So what I'm basically saying, I'm basically separating whatever measurement I get into Psi and Psi W I do not care what part is being put into the noise. Hmm. Yeah. I do not care. That's what I'm saying. By, yeah. by doing this exercise, I'm saying whatever output you gave me, I'll try to make sure that that output is coming from psi and side of you. So I'm not allocating anything particularly to noise. How much of it is possibly noise is not being predicted here. It will just, uh, on its own, it will just... It's on its own, whatever little bit is left will be accounted for in the noise, but I'm not making an allocation to it. Per mm -hmm. se. Mm -hmm. But whereas in a Kalman filter, what I'll do is I'll take the noises into account. Mm -hmm. So there I'll actively make sure I'll try to minimize noise as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I'll try to explain as much as I can through the dynamics and whatever only I cannot explain through my dynamics will be put into the noise. Mm -hmm. That allocation I can make there in Kalman filter. That is the only difference between the Leuenberger observer and the Kalman filter, where I'm taking the effect of the noise in the dynamics into account and then doing the job. So K will not depend only on AC. It, it will have some effect from the noise also. Yes, K will there depend on the noise as well. Both the process noise as well as the measurement noise, they will play an effect. In fact, when you're tuning a Kalman filter, it is those noise values covariance matrices that do, you do need to tune in order to tell the filter which measurements to believe more and which measurements to believe less. So like uh, our sensors properties is what uh, will help us to understand. Correct. So the more accurate your sensor is, the lesser the covariance matrix will be on those diagonals. And then your filter will tend to believe those values more. Hmm. Whereas here it doesn't care. Hmm. Here it is ambivalent to what is happening with the noise. Hmm. Right? So it is saying that I don't care what you're doing with the noise. I'm just trying to explain it as best as I can between Psi and Psi W. But there the problem will be, it will try to say, okay, whatever can I explain with Psi and Psi W, I'll put it there and I'll try to minimize whatever is being put in the noise. Hmm. So I'm just giving you an intuitive understanding of it. The mathematics of it is much more complex and mm. requires stochastic dynamical systems approach, which is not really needed for us. For us, the intuitive understanding is more important. Mm. 
So mm. when we tune it or when we play around with it, we understand. Mm. Okay, good question. I hope now that is clear. Yes, sir. Okay, the idea is that here we are not making the noise is not affecting our games, but in the Kalman filter, the noise will affect our games. So we try to minimize noise as much as possible there and explain as much as possible we can. So what in essence Kalman filter will be doing is it will try to explain the measurements as best as possible and only when it cannot explain in any other way, it will put those things into the noise. So whatever you see in the noise is really the unexplainable part. So it maximum extraction of information will happen. Whereas here that is not the case. Here I'm, I don't care what is going into the noise. Some amount of the signal which may possibly be explainable may still be going into the noise for all I know. Hmm. We didn't allow it to... Uh, we are not allocating anything to the noise here. Hmm. We are not telling this, uh, this filter to determine what part is actually going to noise. We are only asking it to separate out between Psi and Psi W. Hmm. We are not telling it what should be allocated to noise. But there it will actually try to minimize the noise as well. Hmm. <coughs> so whatever estimation error will be there, x tilde x minus x hat or x tilde is what we defined it. You will see that that error will almost always be in a Kalman filter be a Gaussian white noise or close to. Hmm. Which means that I have extracted maximum information at all frequencies out of it and whatever is left is uniformly distributed and put out there. There is no extra discernible information left in the system. Hmm. Okay. We'll discuss about the Kalman filter in the coming lecture on uh, when we discuss in the next class. I will probably need to take a class on 25th and then followed by a 27th as well. But the 27th is only to give you an example of how Kalman filter can be applied to heading controllers. Okay. All right. Okay, and on Monday we will discuss more about the exam as well. Any other questions on the material today? Sir, the robot localization package that we use, hmm. uh, they might not have considered this dynamics as the, uh, like in the exact thing. Yes, it considers only kinematics. Yeah. Now you're catching on. <laughs> so like, uh, we should have our own then like with including these uh... dynamics. You can you can filter your you you can devise a state estimator based on these dynamics. That carbon filter is purely based on uh, the idea that it is only using kinematics. But then if you're measuring accelerations and if you want derivatives of accelerations, it becomes a little challenging to model them in the plant. Hmm. That is usually the problem. And kinematics is good enough for most applications, you will see. Now, like uh, there, we, we use that EKF. So it is actually doing it for very small, small parts, right? Uh, like uh, the entire curve, it is, uh, trajectory it is uh, dividing into small small segments and it is applying the kinematics only on those small segments so there whatever was a uh, uh, velocity or say that will give you the position like more or less correctly if the is that what is that means? no no no. Uh, no 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 i didn't follow your idea of segmenting the trajectory that didn't make sense tell me once more what you meant by that uh, we in the field and service robotics course, the, we were at that uh, the EKF thing actually uh, the whatever the actual trajectory might be hmm. that is being divided into small segments uh, which are almost linear. Mm, no. oh, is it uh, almost? Uh, I mean, uh, the almost constant acceleration parts. Like the ah, very assuming that ah yes that is true. So in your Kalman filters which you are using on that from Ross when you are mm -hmm. using it, you are assuming that the 
uh, what you call the derivative of the accelerations and the derivative of the angular velocities mm. are having zero mean Gaussian processes. Mm. So the jerk, which is mm. the derivative of the acceleration and the angular velocities derivatives mm. are actually zero mean Gaussian processes, which means that you're assuming that they're not changing very rapidly. Mm. So is being included there. That's yeah, it. so kinematics alone, maybe that's why it uh, suffices. Uh, as long as it's a slow problem, yes. But if the suppose the accelerations are varying very, very, very quickly, hmm. then it might then the that model may not be a accurate model. So for example, as a, last time Aditya had asked the question, if we were hmm. looking at aircraft dynamics, can I apply the PID control? We cannot the, apply the PID control which we discussed in our class because we are assuming that the angles don't change very rapidly. Hmm. So that is not being taken into account. Hmm. So that, that will cause problems. So in, if we, the same thing will happen here too, you will need a different state estimator probably for such applications. Hmm. But for most robotic applications, why Ross is able to give that and make it work is most robotic applications which are not involving extreme g forces and things like that hmm. you can get away with this hmm. suppose if you're doing a state estimator for a spacecraft which isro wants to put on a orbit hmm. then you can't use the same state estimator which you are using here there you'll have to even consider the effect that the gravity is actually changing over time and you move away from it so all of these things will come into the consideration hmm. so then your plant dynamics may change there Hmm. There you will formulate the system based on the dynamics of the system. You may formulate the predictions. Hmm. So that's why this this tool is pretty useful in the sense that where we can do much more modeling, the Kalman filter will help us make our predictions that much better in the case when measurements are absent. See, when the measurements are absent, the filter will try to predict the states and keep going forward. Hmm. Correct. As long as your model is more accurate, that prediction window can be longer. Mm. You can have, you can, you can be what you call it. You can allow for the updates on the GPS to come much later mm. if you model the dynamics more accurately. Mm. That is the idea. The lesser the accurate the dynamics is, the faster it will diverge. The filter will diverge when the measurements are not coming. Yes. You can only predict for a short time. So let us say that uh, if you had a proper modeling of the craft, say you're able to predict for one second, then you may be able to predict only for half a second without it. Mm. Proper, proper modeling. I'm just giving example numbers. These may mm. have no meaning, right? Just to comparative numbers. Mm -hmm. So a, a more accurate modeling of the dynamics of the craft is useful if you are plugging it into your Kalman filter, then you can have a longer prediction windows. And also your states will probably converge a little faster. Hmm. And so far, whatever we have discussed here, we have not talked about Kalman filters yet, but whatever we have discussed today is only applicable to linear systems. Hmm. So when the system is non-linear, what we can do is we can linearize it about that particular point about which we are looking at and apply the same dynamics again. Mm. But then the linearization may have its own issues. Mm. If the plant may be stable, may not be stable, you do not know. Mm. And if it is not stable, then the filter may diverge, mm. which means you will start seeing a very large increase in your covariance values. Mm. Then you know that the system's dynamics is not going right. So the right way to do it would be to get a filter design based on this, that would be able to uh, allow you to keep your errors to a, as minimal low as possible. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of the Kalman filter in order to try to maximize the effect of dynamics which can be explained. Mm -hmm. So more accurate your dynamics is programmed, the Kalman filter will try to see what measurements it is getting and try to allocate and say, okay, these measurements, how best they can be explained using your dynamics. Hmm. What really cannot be explained only will be put into the noise.
so uh, as good as our what as good as we give it the physics it can it will it do it much better the closer it will be the convergence will be better that's okay. so then we can try designing this custom observers for our uh, vessel as well right absolutely. if we know absolutely there is no doubt absolutely we should do that we should not rely only on the ross based thing all the time we should definitely try this out the ross one is like a generalized one it will be applicable for most of the thing but yes it is only based on kinematics as we discussed just now it's purely based on kinematics it is not based on dynamics of the vessel that is not there okay, okay. all right shall we any more questions or shall we close out Okay so in that case let me stop recording